everyone this is nitya and we're back with another episode of placement talks we have with us akshra who's going to share her insights and tips on the placement journey and a few other hacks on how to ace it so akshra would you like to please introduce yourself so my name is akshra pramod and i am from the electronics and computer engineering branch i'm currently in my last sem of the btech degree degree my cumulative gpa right now is of 9.15 i am interested in management marketing and right now i am developing interest in web development and stuff just to, for your information i just want to tell you people that basically i was planning for my masters and i had to go for higher studies when i got this ppo offer so i consulted a few people and they guided me and that's why after the entire conversation it was just a 5 minute deadline for me if i want to go for higher studies or i want to do this like take the job offer so i finally ended up taking this job offer oh wow that's that's amazing congratulations on your placement also so to start off would you like to like tell us about the selection process and how the application was done yeah so okay firstly uh, this application process is done through vip itself so they send out google forms and you have to register via that and after that the company does the first short listing that is generally based on cgpa and your branch i'll tell you one thing that there are certain companies that only focus on cse students or people who have some specialization in cse so that what happens sometimes with few companies and after the selection process the coding round we generally go through and then the entire interview process is done so okay that was that was nice so as you mentioned like about the interview process would you be le- like able to tell us how many steps or levels were there and how did you prepare for it yeah so okay uh, generally when i went through my interview process it had basically three steps the first step was the coding round so in the coding round there were basically multiple choice questions along with a coding question and for me personally the coding ra- uh, the coding question was easier but the mcqs were bit difficult because they they involved higher and advanced dbms dsa os concepts there were data communication network concepts there was computer architecture and all so that part was a tidy difficult for me uh, after the interview process around 43 people were selected for the second round which was the technical round so for me the technical round was basically about uh, like it for me it was a dbms centric it is not always going to be like that for people it is like coding as well but for me it was dbms centric because i had worked with dbms and dsa concepts that is one to be for sure in every technical round after the technical round there was a managerial round which involved a lot of like about my projects if in your resume you have mentioned about certain certifications or some patent or research work you have done so managerial round was all about that and after that a final list was given so how i prepared for it was like i went through gfg first that was my first thing after i uh, got selected for the first round i saw experiences of people like for internship play, uh, experiences placement experiences and i got to know what are the type of questions that generally recruiters ask for optums uh, in turn uh, placement process so i got to know about that then next year i uh, searched through youtube and gfg for my dsa concepts thoroughly and my algorithms that i focused on and for practice i used hackerang and sometimes uh, gfg as well so that is how i prepared for it and so it must be like pretty competitive right so can you tell us what you found helpful for your preparation and your strategies for the placement 
Okay, so my first strategy was like for every round I had different strategies. So like the managerial round, I have people who are there in that department, like my family members. So I went to them for like give me some guidance at how to approach, and they told me certain stuff that you should know about the company. Just visit their website once before you go for the managerial round. For the technical round and for the uh, uh, coding round, I was like preparing, I was already coding, I was doing practice on hacker rank and that and all I completed and I just brushed up through my projects once so that I just don't mess up when I know what important points I need to tell them at that time that this is something which was very important and highlighted in my project so that I don't miss up on that because there's a lot of pressure when you're sitting for an interview. So I just brushed up to that some DSA concepts and like my basic knowledge on DBMS and certain stuff, which is important for any developer. So I just brushed through them and coding was like on a routine thing at that time. So now I'm actually starting to rethink my plans for the preparation. So like on to a different kind of question um, regarding clubs. So like technical, non-technical, do you think they have any effect on the placements? What do you feel? Yeah, so personally, uh, actually, I was a manager of Team Aviators International for almost like two years. So I think personally, that was the plus bonus point for me during the interview because uh, generally, there are many uh, roles that come. Sometimes it's product management as well. And sometimes there are like, uh, these developer roles. So when product management comes there, you have to put in something about your leadership qualities and your co-curriculars, they play an important role. And during my tech interview, a major part of it involved questions like, I have uh, been a part of this club, I have done something in this club, so how was the experience? This was a part of my technical round. So it's always good to be part of uh, non-technical as well as technical clubs. It's always good to have some co-curricular so that you can engage yourself. And there is always a plus point in your learning curve when you are a part of something like that. Okay, that was like a great insight on clubs. Um, what do you think about soft skills? Like, do they do they play a role in this journey? I personally feel that surely soft skill plays a role. Like, if you enter a room where your interviewer asking you something, and even when you have to say no, the way you say no also makes a difference. If you say I don't know an answer, there is a subtle way of saying that too. So everything that you have to present yourself, it is all your soft skills. So that plays a very important role when you are there for any placement process. Because many times that's gonna help you to be a little more stable and a little more calm. And it is, it'll help you strategize yourself well. So like moving on, um, I'm sure you're aware of the pressure to have a great resume and like what sort of things come with it. So what do you think captures their attention? Uh, are like projects and work experiences are very related? Yeah. Uh, so basically, I let you know first mistake of mine while I made my resume. It was a three-page resume, which was the worst thing I could have done. So I'll strictly suggest that stick to one, stick to a one-page resume. It's always good because for your first impression, it just takes seven seconds for any person to decide if they want to go forward with you, if they want to like take that chance and talk to you about that, everything. It, it makes your first impression. So it's like you should go up with a one-page resume and try to confine all the important aspects that you have worked upon in that because like you give your introduction and certain uh, like your certifications and your work experience, your research papers and your projects. Like if you have 10 projects and you mention all of them, it's like going to be very difficult for them. They'll not keep on asking you about everything. But if you have like literally three very good projects, just, just add them in your resume and it's going to be like good for you. It's like quality is above quantity when you are sitting for any interview. So 
just focus on your research paper like the research sections and your work experience sections and if you have any important certification never miss out on those do mention them in your resume do mention your projects because they give you a high chance you are like once you'll stand out in your interview if you have something extra that you have done uh, among all your uh, other ca candidates um okay so like you mentioned that you you were a nine pointer and that um you had a great cg so do you think cgpa uh, plays a very important role in this uh, placement process and what do you think cgpa plays a very very important role i'll be very honest because there are companies who shortlist based on the cgpa okay the first step is uh, they are going to shortlist you is going to be based on the cgpa for placement process it will be still a little more lenient because if they have given 7 above cgpa or 7.5 above cgpa there is still a chance that you can get through the first shortlisting but when it comes to internships you will see that there will be only nine pointers in the shortlist list so it's like first round only nine pointers and there are certain things like with my branch i'll tell you that when it was uh, uh, for our branch in some companies it was only the top 3 rankers so it's that difficult to just get into the list where you can just actually try your chance with that company so cgpa is very important i'll say and it's not very very good that you just take it very lightly and just not work mm, okay so like do you have any other like advice or some uh, any um, mistakes in your experiences that you would like to share yeah firstly i have a few pointers my first pointer i've seen many people do that is that is missing out the application forms so you uh, people don't check their vip mails regularly and they just end up missing their application forms and their deadlines and then they are like we couldn't register so do not ever do that keep a check always at least once a day just check so that you can just fill out the application forms secondly like if a person is not so workaholic and not so much into coding it is very difficult to just motivate and sit up in front of the laptop and code for hours and search and all that i'll just say that if you just pep yourself a little bit it will all be worth it like at last you'll be happy you'll be satisfied with whatever you are done when you get the output no it's like the best feeling you can ever get and apart from that one small thing uh, when you all be going through your placement process it's not only your hard work and your skills it it is going to be somewhere about your luck as well so don't be very demotivated that i do not get into this if in the first company second company are not getting it's fine there are hundreds of companies that are going to come in the way and you can definitely sit for them and try so make it just a 15 minute rule that okay i did not get selected i'm feeling bad or i'm upset about something that's fine take it for 15 minutes and then just forget it and move on to the other things that you have lined up for yourself that's okay so that was great advice especially for me also <laughs> so yeah thank you so much for um sitting through this and giving your insights about this process it was really nice of you thank you